Kevin Locker, welcome to the Beyond Football Podcast. Wow, that's powerful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Thank Kevin. you both. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I you. just wanted to get started. Like, getting promoted is some of the things that a young player would aspire to do. What was your feeling? What, or how did you feel once that happened? Uh, with Harrogate? Yeah, <coughs> talk me through that experience. So, um, I didn't actually get promoted too fair with them. So I, uh, I knew I was going to sign for them regardless of the outcome of the playoffs. Mm. So, um, I was just like watching it live thinking either way, I'm going to sign for these guys. So obviously I'm hoping they get promoted. <laughs> um, so I can't really claim that as a promotion, but, um, it led me to play in the football league. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, although it didn't go the way I would have hoped it to, but yeah, yeah. yeah so but <clears throat> speaking for them, obviously being part of that group in the, the next season, like it was ridiculous. Like, especially to go from non-league to EFL, that could, that's probably the best promotion, all apart from like championship to prem, like in terms of like the, what changes and mm. the amount of things that happen after that. Um, you could tell it gives everyone a massive, a massive lift. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, it's good. It's good. Well, Kevin. I know you from uh, <laughs> many different places, yeah. playing against you, playing with you. Um, but share a little bit about how kind of football started for you. Mm -hmm. um, a bit about your background, a bit about mm. your football journey. Yeah, sure. So um, typically, as, as you expect, Sunday League football started um, up until a late age of 15. Wow. So okay, didn't wow. get scouted up until that point. Didn't really think of football as a career until that point. Um, it was only when... I was playing for Tilbury, my Sunday league club, um, that, you know, at half time, our manager was giving us a, a bollocking because we're doing so bad. And I was thinking, he never shouts, why is he shouting? <laughs> and he was like, there's a there's a Norwich scout out there looking at you lot and you're giving me that. So I thought, oh, this second half, I better make sure I turn it up. <laughs> so <coughs> so um, I had a really good second half and I actually got scouted from that game. Um, and the rest is really history because I went in a six week trial back when six week trials were a thing. Yeah. Um played against West Ham, uh, which was like two minutes from my house. Um and yeah, after that game they offered me a contract um to to, you know, become a schoolboy under fifteen player at Norwich. Um which was crazy really because again, I never really thought of football as a career. Mm. It never crossed my mind. I knew I enjoyed it. But I initially started playing football because I was a really big kid and I, I needed to lose weight. <laughs> that was the main reason I played football. I didn't have the huge enjoyment that I do have, like, have for it now. Uh, my mum and dad wanted me to lose weight, went and done that and uh, ended up to be quite good. Um, and get, to then get scouted and then become an under 15 player for, for Norwich was just like, <laughs> like really? <laughs> so that probably went in my favor um as well as against me because um you know i probably didn't have that self-belief mm. i had that imposter syndrome you could say for a long part of my career um probably until i got into my 20s because i'd never had the benefit the benefits of playing for academy from under nines up until you know youth team and beyond so <clears throat> i always felt like i was playing catch up um you know a lot of my career was looking at other players in my team thinking you guys are meant to play football. I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm big. Yes. I'm left footed. Yes. Went in my favor, but in terms of everything else, ability on the ball pace, I had none of that. I probably still don't, <laughs> 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 but <clears throat> yeah, it all went it sort of against me in my mind. Anyway, mm. probably wasn't re the reality. Um, and then, um, you know, to, to then move into the building full time and get a scholarship and, um, be at a Premier League club, <clears throat> it became real. So you spoke about during your younger years that football wasn't your be or end all. So what other things were you interested in? Um, going back to that time, um, it was difficult for me to, one, because of my age, but also um, I just didn't really have anything in mind. I knew that I enjoyed sport. I knew that I enjoyed being active. Um, so maybe like a PE teacher would have sprung to mind or maybe even being a fireman, something like, you know, mm. practical. Um, but there was no real <clears throat> idea um, from my side anyway. My mum and dad probably had their own ambitions being, yeah. you know, where they're from. 
um but yeah it was difficult for me to really imagine what I would have done looking back now if it wasn't for football because football really gave me an opportunity gave me a focus gave me a sort of a drive to achieve something um although I realized that later um you know it put me in good stead in terms of putting me around people put me around a professional environment which also taught me a lot of things about punctuality about being on time being professional being the best of the best like these are things that are you know stick with you for a long time or f mm. forever um but yeah i i d genuinely don't have any idea what would have done um mm. which is um a worrying prospect for <clears throat> you know young people who maybe come from a certain area where you know as i said off air it's not i was never from a bad area but i was from an area where there's distraction and there was um mm. different temptations and it could have led to a different path for me but um, I'm fortunate enough that I was in the right place right time I got picked up by Norwich and I had a focus and um, you know so yeah I don't know what I would have done no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so interesting that you that you touch on that I guess you speak about football being your focus at such a young age mm. kind of really instilling disciplines and different things like that would you say I guess it's a worrying thing to just have football at that age or do you think it's okay because I think it's something we always wrestle with when me and Dan speak. How soon do you start to kind of develop other strings to your bow, mm. you know, without it taken, maybe taken away from football? I think it's terrible to be honest. I think, yeah. I think you need to, um, even if you're a hot prospect, even if you're somebody who is on, you know, on track to become the best player in the country, it doesn't matter what stage you're at, mm. but if you're a young person, um, whether it's football or, or another profession, you need to have something alongside it. And I, in my opinion, like you need to be doing, finish your GCSEs, mm. you then need to choose something alongside your scholarship. So I know you do the BTEC um, sports course when you're a scholar <laughs> at yeah. a club. What that gets you, I don't know, <laughs> but <coughs> didn't do anything for me anyway. Um, but I feel like you need to either take A-levels or pick up a trade. Mm. I feel like it has to be mandatory to complete oh, yeah. your scholarship in my opinion you need to have again like i said a trade or an a level or something that can put you in good stead for the future and if you don't have one of them or you don't complete one of them then you don't progress into a full-time first team environment until you ha that's my opinion mm. uh, that's, that's that's how strongly i believe about you it because hear your opinion you know what? i know, yeah. I know oh, yeah. it's a results-based business and if you're good enough then you're ready enough to play but if something happens to you and you, I don't know, you can't play football, you become ill, you're quickly forgotten about. So mm. you need to really have something in place. And I feel like before you even touch first team football, you should have, similar to like America, you go out yeah. to America and you have, you take like a college university degree yeah. and you have to complete that. And then you, then you three point GPA. You have to get all these <laughs> things before yeah. you can start playing professionally. And in my opinion, it should be something similar here in the UK. Mm. Um, because you're quickly forgotten about if something doesn't go well. Um, you know, it takes the pressure off of your professional game. Um, you know, it gives you another direction. And um, and yeah, football's a short career. Mm. <laughs> Being an athlete is a short career. And mm. you, I just can't emphasize how important it is for, you can get to the nitty grit, like you can yeah. get into the point with family involved and, you know, all these things when you've got so much pressure on becoming a footballer and it doesn't go quite your way or uh, a month or a season doesn't go your way. The, the pressures on your family, the pressures on yourself, your mental health, mm -hmm. people around you. Um, and for some people, it's, it's been too much. And you've seen in like the media, like it is too much for certain people and people have like go as far as losing their lives. So. Mm -hmm. Really and truly, in my opinion, you need to have something alongside football because, yeah, yeah. yeah 10 years is just not enough to not have something alongside it, you know, yeah. a 10 year career. It's good. It's good. I think, um, I know you wanted to jump in with a question, Dan, but how much would you say your cultural upbringing um, had a 
kind of part to play in shaping your mentality at either that young age or mm. even where you are today. Yeah, massive to be fair. Like my dad's from Ghana. I don't know you two know this, but not many <laughs> people you know, know this. I'm, <laughs> not, I'm Nigerian, <laughs> so we always mock Ghanaians. Yeah. But the last AFCON that you lot just played, <laughs> hey, hey, we were saying. We <laughs> <laughs> <Hey, laughs> back to the question. I yeah, always yeah, yeah. say Ghanaians are pigeons, and <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> Egg munchers. <Wow. laughs> yeah, nah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, like my dad's from Ghana and my mum's from Ukraine. So I've got a big mix in my family and they're two different cultures that are very passionate in terms of men having, um, you know, a career and being secure for their future, for the families and, and kids. So um, for my mum and dad to accept for me to go into football and not take up university was massive. So I had to really prove to them after some time that that is really what I wanted to, to, to do because um, they were not a fan of, you know, for me to go off to another city and live there and for, for me to maybe not even become a professional footballer. The prospect of me becoming a footballer was like, oof, but then I think after years and for them to see my success, it then become apparent to them that, you know, this is what their son wants to do. So mm. that become easier. But <clears throat> no, uh, for them to have those worries made me worry or mm. made me prepare myself um, going forward. There was always that, you know, my mum and dad always used to say to me that, you know, what if it doesn't happen? And um, for that reason, I always more so for them probably, but I've always been conscious of the fact that I need to do something alongside football. Yeah. And I've tried different things, I've failed different things, mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've been successful with different things, but the main thing is that I did have that in my mind to to pursue something alongside football. And um, I'm glad I have, I'm glad they were paranoid, I'm glad they were worried <laughs> um, because, yeah, um, as I've touched on, mm. I just think it's so important to have something alongside football. Yeah. Um, you know, football's one thing, but life is yeah. a multitude of things. <laughs> yeah. So then, even just off the back of that, how how important would you say those early kind of carers or parents or people who guide you from a young age where mm. you probably don't see the bigger picture of life mm. are to a young footballer kind of going through the ranks? Yeah, massive. And how important was it for you? Yeah, massive. And to be fair, I probably didn't have like... Um, community around me or people who are constantly checking in on me like asking you know how things are or are you taking care of this part of your sort of life off the pitch I didn't really have that but again my mum and dad were very <laughs> insistent on on me being prepared for the worst case scenario um but in terms of like younger footballers now like it's, it's so important to have those people around you and um I'd like to think it's probably getting better um mm. I think people are more aware of you know um, the pitfalls of becoming a, a footballer and what can what can happen for those who don't quite make it or they do make it and they become bankrupt or they don't find a passion and become depressed and I think there's more awareness now so I think pit players are looked after a bit more now um, but yeah it's probably the most important thing it is the most important thing being a youngster to have mm -hmm. that community around you because um, you know you are a product of your environment a lot of the time. And mm. um, if you've got people instilling good messages into you and speaking good words around you and, and emphasizing the most important things about life, then chances are you're gonna have that similar mindset really. Mm. Um, but if you've got people who are doing nonsense outside and up to no good or trying to l lure you into temptation or then chances are you may or may not, but you, you've got a good chance that you're gonna follow in those footsteps. So yeah your environment you've got to be very protective of your energy in my opinion and mm. um and make sure you're around the right people but it's difficult as youngsters you know yeah. Yeah. your friends are your friends or yeah. your family's your family and you can't control that sometimes so it's good it's mm. good yeah. i felt the the passion in your voice when you spoke about the the necessity of scholars having a trade or mm. or how you're doing their a levels talk me through an experience or a story from your journey where that passion's come from yeah, <laughs> um, probably because, so as I've touched on, I've always been aware that I need to prepare for life after football or life during football. Um, however, I've never known what to do. So mm. um, I started off taking a sports science degree when I was 19, but um, I quickly uh, come away from that because um, I felt like I hadn't established myself 
enough yet as a footballer. And I thought at, at that time that I was being distracted from my plan A. Um, mm. So I quit that. Um, and then as I matured, got a bit older, got into my mid mid twenties, I thought, you know what, let me start a business degree because again, um, maybe that experience of being a youngster was too much for me to do a uni degree as well as become a footballer at my early stages. So I thought, well, let me just try again. Mm. So I started a business management degree and, um, and then I had my daughter. Um, mm. That was a bit of a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> so I come away from that. Um, and then, yeah, and then it's led me to do what I do now, which is I work in financial services alongside football, uh, mm. which is great. I love it. Um, but again, I don't know if that's my future. Like, mm. I don't know what I want to do, really and truly. Um, but I'm just trying to tick off as many boxes as I can to give me the option. Um, more recently, I like the idea of being in football. Um, mm. So, you know, that's potential as well for the future. So I'm going to do my UEFA B this summer. Nice. Um, and, and, you know, maybe progress into my UEFA A in the, in the future. <clears throat> but there was a time when I got released. Uh, so when I got to... I signed for Colchester, having been released from Norwich, and um, I was injured all season because I had a, a really bad tear in my hip, um, which needed surgery. Um, so I had my surgery and got back got back fit, and then I got released, um, which was a killer blow for me, really, because I'd come up, you know, got released from Norwich. We'd won the FA Youth Cup. I didn't mm. play, really, but uh, we still won the FA Youth <laughs> Cup, and, you know, I thought okay, let me just establish myself at League One level, play senior football and really try and kick on here in my career. But then the injury setback, having played really well in pre-season, I was probably on the verge of making my League One debut at 19 mm -hmm. years old. Um, but that injury setback led me to being released. And after then, no one wanted me. Like, mm -hmm. I had to look at non-league because no League Two teams, no League One clubs, like, not many National League clubs wanted me. So, mm -hmm. um and I had nothing to fall back on because like I said, I started my sports science degree, didn't really f like fancy doing that. Um, and, you know, I I found myself in limbo. Like I really found myself panicking because yes, I didn't have responsibilities. I didn't have children in that age or I didn't have a mortgage to pay for, but my own sense of worth at, at being a man and thinking my parents like, mm. oh, I'm proving them right now. Like, you know, mm. I, maybe I'm not going to make it. And that worry and that panic and that led me to a real like dark place mentally because I didn't know if I was going to get a club. I didn't know what I was going to do. I had no qualifications really. Mm. Um, so um, that is probably, that's my biggest example of, you know, um, or that, that's the reason why I am quite passionate because I know where that took me mentally, not being able to fall back on something or start, um, you know, not worrying about my future. Um, that that was a real tough time. So yeah. yeah. And how did you pull yourself out of that dark place? Um, I la I landed on my feet eventually because I signed for Welling in the National League uh, in the conference back then. Um, so that was signing for Welling was like a mask to f of what I was actually feeling like it mu it it was a distraction mm. like the the feelings I was feeling was still there like I was still paranoid I was still insecure about my future um but signing for a club was like oh, okay I can breathe I'm good get some income it's something that my parents could look at okay he's in another club but I still had that feeling in my chest like oh, if this doesn't work out I'm back to square one I'm not going to be I'm going to be unemployed again mm. And in the lower levels, like especially, it's one year contracts and it's it's difficult. So mm. um, there was a lot of like anxiety around that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think from that point, um, I started doing my courses um, and completing some things. I've done a personal trainer's qualification. I completed it. I'll make sure wherever I started, I tried to complete <laughs> because there's been too many times where I started things and not finished it. Mm. Um, so yeah, it probably wasn't until last year that I've actually come away from the real anxiety I've been feeling from mm. being a footballer um, because now, especially I've got a mortgage, I've got a daughter, I've got a partner, like mm. the anxiety is, well, it should be a lot higher, but it's actually gone down now because mm. I've actually dug into 
the causes of my anxiety, you know, um, and that is not being prepared um, and a multitude of other things mm. around football and life and stuff. But yeah. yeah, that's why not being prepared is just like, can't be an option for young yeah. young footballers right now. No, it's, it's so interesting because as I'm sitting here, I'm balancing two things of the controllables, which mm. we talk about a lot, control the controllables, mm. but football just seems to throw up so many uncontrollables. You know, and I guess anxiety is, is a fear of the future in advance, basically. Mm. So it's like, what would you give advice around the uncontrollables of football and the controllables of football? Because it was like, for me, as I'm listening to you, it's like it was an uncontrollable or the uncontrollable nature of football, which actually m made you pursue more controllables, mm. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. What, what, any thoughts on that? Yeah, def I think... It, and it is, it is the uncontrollables that affect you probably the most because they can have the heaviest impact. But as you say, if you if you control your controllables, the impact isn't quite as severe. Mm. Um, it, it, you know, for me, uh, I, I let an uncontrollable then control my controllables. Yeah, every bar. Stay with me. <laughs> Stay with me. But um, if you control your controllables, the uncontrollables won't hit you as hard. Mm. They, they just won't hit you as hard mm. if you control your controllables. Yeah, so my advice to younger people or people in you know football or any sort of like sporting profession where the career is so short is um, put things in place, like really put things in place um, for your future. But also, and this is just like coming off topic a little bit, don't forget like where you've come from in a sense, like mm. um, career is one thing, but also like for me, I probably like excluded or didn't speak to a lot of people who probably had my best interests at heart. So mm. from a young age, I thought, oh, I'm at Norwich now or mm. I'm at Colchester, like I don't really need you no more. And there were people, probably people who did have my best interests at heart, mm. but I just went on this like solo mission, like, cause none of my family or friends knew about football. So I thought, let me just forget about them then. Like, mm. I'm the only one that knows what I'm doing. So let me just go on this solo mission. But mm. like, no one's man enough or too strong enough uh, mm. to do this by yourself. So community, keep the good people around you, put things in place before something unexpected can really rock you. Um, and yeah, they're the two biggest things I'd say as a young mm. footballer because then you can really, then you can enjoy your football. Mm. It's easy for me to sit here and start saying that football like it makes it sound like football's bad. Like football's yeah. a great <laughs> thing, but like enjoy it and enjoy it by having things to fall back on and enjoy mm. it by having good people around you. And um, then you can really like fulfill your potential because yeah. you know you can attack it wholeheartedly. You know, yeah. mm. it's good. It's good. It the image of like um, you know when you go out the house it's not raining, but you take an umbrella just in case. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Because the goal is to stay dry. Oh, Do you know what I'm saying? Geez, so that. if <laughs> if, the, if you don't need to use the umbrella, fantastic, sun mm. shining all day. But if it does start raining, you're ready to go. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's not saying just walk around with an umbrella when the sun's out. Mm. <laughs> it's actually enjoy the sun. Yeah. But just in case the rain comes, mm. you got an umbrella, you're ready to go in it. 100%. So it's, it's, it's class, man. 100%. It's class. I need to touch on the fact that Dan, um, Dan's got to pay a fine somehow for that phone going. <laughs> 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 I'm waiting for that. Listen, oh man. Let's not talk about that. Let's focus. <laughs> yeah. um. nah, <laughs> there's... I feel like there's there's a I'll lot take of a coffee though as a fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I mean. Oh listen. <laughs> no. But yeah. So I caught your cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those ones. It's good. But you spoke about those injuries that you've had. Mm. I was wondering whether you'd had any opportunities to work with any like specialists in terms of sports psychologists or anything and how that influenced your your experiences with those injuries or situations? It's a good question because um, I didn't. I think probably mine and Toby's um, like era coming into like professional football yeah. um, is probably a lot different to what it is now. Yeah, like I, I was, we were still in the era where if things were going wrong, who cares? Yeah, Just get on, get with, on it. with it. <laughs> so there's a lot of masking, a lot mm. of putting things to the back of your mind and a lot of just like attacking what's in front of you yeah. rather than like dealing with stuff. So I didn't speak to anyone. Um, 
and I think not speaking to someone during those times of like in dark times, uh, especially being injured and other things are happening in life and whatnot, like uh, probably impacted my career in a negative way. Mm. Um, you know, you're always told like football so quick. Like there's a game Saturday, there's a game Tuesday. Like mm. there's no time to mope around. There's no time to feel sorry for yourself. Like things happen so quick. You don't deal with anything. And I think that probably negatively impacted my career. And at some point it's my life as well because mm. um, you find coping mechanisms when things are happening so quickly in football, you've not got time to really get into like, you know, the inner parts of the issue. Mm. Um, you find things, whether it's substances, whether it's like, habits to you know as defense mechanisms to mm. deal with certain things you're not really dealing with them you're just like you're finding quick fixes to yeah. get you through the week and i developed like really unhealthy habits so like you know um, loads of different things like mm. i don't need to like name them but um i use like i start using yeah. <laughs> make of that as you will but yeah. like i start using mm. and um you know and these things were like in my opinion, at the time, I felt like I, it was benefiting me because it made me ready for a Tuesday or Saturday. Like, mm. but as your life and career goes on, you realize that these things are hindering you, and you really just need to get to the nitty gritty and get to like, you know, get to the reason why you're feeling a certain way, and not cover it up through substance or you know negative habits. Like, mm. so, um, so yeah. Yeah, they definitely Im negatively impacted my career by not dealing or not speaking about certain things, injuries or personal issues, like, or this whole macho thing. It, yeah. it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. It mm. catches up with you at some point and mm. someone's going to get it. Your mm. career's going to get it. Your missus is going to get it. Mm. Your kid's going to get it. Mm. Someone's get, someone gets it. Yeah. You know, mm. someone feels the impact of your decisions by, or your lack of decision. Mm. You know, someone's going to feel the repercussions of it. Um so, yeah, I'd always just say if you're feeling the type of way or if you're feeling like something's getting a bit too much, look after yourself. Like, you know, dealing with something by forgetting about it or not addressing it is not dealing with it. That's, mm. that's not the correct way to deal with it. It's going to catch up with you. Yeah. And that's coming from me, someone who always tried to portray like, yeah, like skip out, like, yeah, yeah big centre back. Mm. It, it doesn't work. Like, mm. it's, it's going to find its way to creep up in your life and yeah, yeah. hurt you no it's, in, it's so interesting because i think as players ourselves we never want to show a sign of weakness mm. you know what i'm saying we're, we're battling for three points on a saturday against the enemy or opponent do you know what i mean so it's like for young players to step out and say i'm feeling weak in this area i think it's quite tough sometimes you know and, and i think it's tough to do it in-house in a club because that could maybe affect things on the pitch it could affect how teammates relate with you how staff relate with you so mm. i think one of the big things is like going to people independent mm. you know I, I don't know your experience with that but my experience with that is massive because you can deal with stuff healthily away from your football environment mm. do you know what i'm saying so you can go into that football environment whole and healthy so yeah yeah no i think it's it's massive and one of the things i'll just advise young players is find some people that are independent mm. that you can trust that you can work with you know, because then it might not get back to your club, but then you'll actually be going back to your club as a as a whole and better person, you know. No, so. I, I, I agree because um, um, I think there's been a few times where people have potentially spoken to their club. You look at like the whole, I don't know the situation, but you see like Deli Ali, who's come out about his issues and stuff, mm -hmm. um, very public about it. Um, it's hot topic for a day or two days, mm. but then it's like, I, I, I don't know what the situation is in, whether he's getting help and whatnot, but it's like, you've got to be careful because I think if you speak to your club or you rely on your club or you re rely on um, your work to give you the help that you need, you can be disappointed. I think like you said, it's mm. better to go independent and keep that separate because unfortunately football is a results-based business mm. and it's that is the most important thing. Mm. so something as important as your mental health um you know i'd i wouldn't put that in the the hands of your employer mm. <laughs> where you know it's a business and results mean everything so that's not to say people clubs can't help yeah, but 
other words of advice similar to yourself is go independently mm. look after yourself and give yourself the best chance of performing for your club as opposed mm. to relying on your club for issues that mm. you know doesn't involve them really no, 100%. 100%. And, I, and I think it's not saying like you said that clubs can't help mm. but for players out there that are thinking that I can't go to my club like there's other people out there that will support them mm. but the most important thing is get the support mm. that you need you mm. know to be healthy and whole so mm. yeah yeah you spoke about your, your different experiences of going to study at university doing your personal trainer course and then obviously working as a para planner I wanted to understand like how was that process was actually getting that job mm. how did that work how yeah so um this was following um a season at Aldershot where I got injured in pre-season and completely ruptured my quad basically mm. um and you know again I speak about my daughter and my partner and you know a lot around this because um I had two years, a, a two year contract at Aldershot, but I done one year, um, got myself rehabbed and I tore up my contract because I just thought, you know, the most important thing for me is my family mm. and um, the effects of that year at Aldershot and not playing and that injury um, took its toll on everyone, I should mm. say. So, so I wanted to provide some stability for once in my life, you know, mm. not these one year contracts. I wanted to put some steps in place to actually you know, potentially find another career. Mm. Um, so, you know, went part-time with Farnborough um, and I started just to dig deeper into what I'm good at or what skill sets I have from being a footballer, but also what makes me me, what makes me like Kevin Loco. Like, mm. you know, we've all got that thing that we're born with and it's not a footballer. Like, we're not just born and good at football. We're born with other skill sets that we can use in other mm. areas of our lives for me i'd say is people like speaking to people you know doing things like this or whatever but i like to be in front of someone and have a conversation mm. um i like to help people and i like money like <laughs> so i just thought <laughs> so like i just thought you know um what can i do to combine those three things um and make a career out of it and one of the things i thought and that also brings me stability because that mm. was so important for me not just the business idea i needed stability i needed a, a nine to five realistically mm. at, at that time um and um it took me to financial planning uh mm. financial services and you know where i can sit in front of people help them with their you know money issues um but also make an impact on their life um i feel like that could be a good thing for me so um yeah um and but by the way also i, I used um someone at the pfa I can't remember his name now but mm. if you want to also like find out what you're good at or what your mm. uh skill set is there is actually help with the pfa where they yeah, can brilliant. um allocate someone to <laughs> you they can do like a psychometric test that's what i've done mm. and someone from the pfa i think my some of the things that come out was financial planner mm. uh something in sales and mm. a, f a fireman links back to what you're saying earlier yeah it's true yeah oh, so um yeah so it, that was really helpful because it gave me some sort of confidence okay cool like my skill sets lie within somewhere so i yeah. can actually i've got choices and um i can attack one of these things uh and the first place i applied to was someone who used to watch me at welling so like wow. the manager of the firm I, I work for now he was a, a welling season ticket holder so he knew me straight away <laughs> so fortunately i got the job <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> after a quick chat on the phone um and that's where i work now still um and i, I really enjoy it i'm a power planner i work with a fa uh, financial planner um in terms of doing research in terms of doing um report writing administration mm. um i do loads of different bits to prepare the financial planner for his meeting and um that's ideally where I want to get to once I finish my exams. So I've got, um, you know, three more exams to do. So in the future, if I, you know, stay within this, I I will be a financial planner once I finish my exams. Um, and I'm really enjoying that. Mm -hmm. So I do it part time now because I'm back full well, full time with Maidenhead sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I, I'm just happy and I'm enjoying my football now that I've got that there. And um, you know, it's a good distraction for after training if the session didn't go well or Saturday didn't go well and, yeah. and that's yeah. brilliant. But but yeah, that's how I got that job and um, you know, it gives me 
gives me you know choice and stability you know yeah no it's, it's it's class it's class i think even as you're sharing because i guess most of us will probably transition one day i think the statistics are like 91 percent of, of footballers once they retire still need to work mm. you know um whether that's because they want to or whether financially they haven't got enough save to just retire mm. when they finish playing so i guess that transition process like you touched on self-discovery of the skills that you have you touched on the transferable skills or even careers that come off the back of knowing the skill set that you have and also your network mm. you know so i guess those three um for a young person um how would you say they can either develop them or discover them even more um yeah massively i think i think network especially in football um is so undervalued or underrated like you know i think that being a footballer um you're exposed to so many different people from different places and um you know being a, being in this sport um everyone seems to know not everyone but a lot of people <laughs> and you'll be surprised the amount of links that people in football have to different sectors and different businesses and different mm. um you know ideas and um i'd say that that is particularly, you know, the most important thing, really, in terms of trying to establish or learn about a different sort of path. Um, you know, somebody in your network will know what you want to do, or mm. he'll have an idea, a better understanding of who you need to speak to. And um, but it's difficult because, you know, young players, you've got, we're all different. Some people mm. are sociable, some people like reaching out to people, some people don't. Um, yeah. But what I would say is that if you can conjure, like get the courage to to speak to somebody in your field and be not afraid of asking silly questions in, in your mind, but they're not silly questions. If you're trying to reach out to someone or you're trying to learn about something outside football, nine times out of 10 people are willing to help. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, yeah. So, so networking was one. What was the other one? You uh, just self-discovery in terms of understanding your skill set and what you might potentially want to do. Yeah. Um, Again, like I said, for me, I've done the psychometric test, but, um, you know, I think you just got to look at what you tend to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So take yourself away from football. Um, this is what I've done. I took myself away from football and I looked at what I tend to do, whether it's before training, after training, um, you know, in my spare time. What do I spend more hours doing? What do I watch on TV? Like, these are things that you've got to mm. ask yourself because in terms of, doing something that you're passionate about or doing something that you have an interest in, um, you know, having an interest is more likely to motivate you to do that thing. Mm. Even if you're not particularly skilled at it, you know, skill will come after hours of doing something and mm. to spend hours doing something, you need to really enjoy it sort of thing, you know? Yeah. So um, look at what you s tend to do outside of your, you know, outside training. And for me, it was like a lot of telly, but a lot of like finance related things, mm. personal finance things. Um, you know, I like to speak to people. I like to mm. be on the phone with my friends. Um, and it sounds silly, but these are things that I actually enjoy doing. So mm. when you take that away, I speak a lot on the phone to my friends. Uh, I'm very sociable, I'd say. Mm. And I, I look at money a lot and like how to like better my finances and stuff. Financial planning is pretty, like, it sort of <laughs> yeah. zooms in on financial planning. Yeah. And it's mad. When you really do that, spend, like, a few minutes doing that, it will actually drive you, or it can drive you to, like, a select few things that mm. you could potentially pursue. And, um, you know, in terms of, you know, skill sets, um, yeah, that, that's, that's a great thing to do, in my opinion, yeah. you know, to really look at what you um, enjoy. And... Um, especially if it's your skill sets aren't screaming at you. If you enjoy something, you're more likely to get become skilled at it in future because you're more likely to stick with it. So that's, that's what I'd say. Mm. Class. Mm. Very good. Mm. When you are putting your CV together, mm. how did that process work? Because I know... You, you spoke about the BTEC sport earlier on in your career and <laughs> how that didn't really open doors for you. How did you get your foot in the door as a financial planner? A, yeah. yeah, so um, at this point, my CV was pretty messy. 
um you know so i've got like different bits of qualifications from different fields i'm not really like I, at that time i wasn't really um you know efficient in a certain subject i just had different bits of experience from different places so like mm. i've got my level two football i've got my level three personal training i've got a year's business management it's very messy and scattered so i had to rely on what i bring as a person and mm. i think that's probably a good bit of advice for footballers because a lot of footballers um again hopefully this changes but don't have the qualifications to build their cv so mm. you know if you're a character if you're a leader if you're a sociable person if you know how to work in a team which most footballers know how to do and to excel in a team use that as your cv and that's what i done i tried to emphasize the point that you know i've worked in high performing environments um i've led by being a captain on mul multiple different teams um i really tried to like take different parts of my personality and use that as my cv because mm -hmm. i think at the end of the day you can have all the qualifications you you know you know which is, which is great which mm -hmm. is what i advise and hope for next generation of footballers like to get the qualifications but that's the first step but uh you know if you really want to get your foot somewhere in the door uh get your foot in the door somewhere um i'd say use what you bring as a person and um for me is what i just mentioned and um i think people can buy people people buy into people mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. not just the qualifications they buy into the person and um i'd like to think that's how i landed my role because all I tell myself, for me personally, is all I need to do is get in front of someone. <laughs> or all I need to do is get on the phone to someone. Because yeah. once I've got that, I know I can not talk my way into something. Yeah. That sounds quite like devious. And <laughs> like, can it, uh, but, um, you know, I can really show my personality back or show, myself. you know, and back myself. Yeah. yeah. Because, um, you know, you know. Yeah. You I got the child. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's class. Yeah. yeah, it's class. But I guess probably even many people don't know notice about you uh speaking other language as well mm. um i'm always fascinated with people one of my good friends he's from colombia and he speaks spanish mm. literally can just go in and out of spanish and english mm. how's that even played any part in anything if it has at all yeah um, um probably more than i realize um but i guess it gives me understanding of different people uh mm. to empathize different people um so like my mum moved to the um to to england with my dad and they both couldn't speak the greatest of English. They both knew how to speak Russian, obviously, um, from meeting in university in Ukraine. And um, they moved here. So me and my sister growing up predominantly were speaking Russian. Um, my sister probably better than me. But um, yeah, our first language was a mix of Russian and English, uh, mm -hmm. but predominantly Russian. <laughs> um, so, you know, and having parents from different countries and having the knowledge to speak another, another language, um, can it benefit me? Yeah, I suppose so. It's good to write down on the CV and stuff. But I, I suppose the biggest benefit to having another language under my belt is, um, I guess, understanding, again, people. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, knowing how difficult it is to, you know, be in a situation where you're not entirely comfortable, you're not entirely comfortable with a certain language and being able to, like, help certain... I suppose, yeah, that's the that's the biggest benefit i suppose yeah. um but yeah that empathy that i have for foreigners for for people who aren't used to being um in a certain environment i i can empathize with those sort of people because that's my mum and dad really yeah. um and and me to a certain extent as well being you know a man of color speaking russian <laughs> <laughs> don't see it very often you can't see many people yeah. like like me who so a lot of the time uh yeah you're sort of like on your own and mm. uh, I've, I've got some empathy for people who find themselves on their own and yeah i suppose i can you know relate to people yeah so, that's yeah, great that's and we spoke a lot about of about some of the negative experiences of football i wanted to get into what are some of your like, best moments in your football career so far well, I'm surprised other than scoring this weekend yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm surprised he hasn't mentioned that but i'm surprised he hasn't mentioned the youth cup again you know? yeah uh, <laughs> well firstly it's two and two in terms of goal scoring and, um, <laughs> so let's just get that straight uh yeah no so the i suppose the youth cup is a highlight but for me personally it's like it's bittersweet really because mm. It's great. Don't get me wrong. My family and I spoke a lot about family like having to mm. believe in my journey and stuff. And for them to see me on ITV against Chelsea Youth Cup final, 
that's a big statement, right? Yeah. That's like, although I didn't play, I was on the bench and stuff. Like, that's a big statement. That's like, oh, maybe Kev has got a chance in this game. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. That's <laughs> massive. That was massive for me. And like people from my school traveled to like Stanford Bridge to watch and it was like a huge occasion. But like after the game, like, I remember just going like back to my mum's house, um, just feeling low. Like, mm. you know, I wasn't a driving factor for that success. Mm. And um, again, like I said, this is football and you've got to really like, you know, appreciate where you've, what you've done in the game and the mm. environment you've been in. But for me, that was like a failure because I didn't yeah. play. But you look at that team that playing that played in that final against Chelsea, most of them have played in the Premier League. Like they've done really well, especially those in my position. Harry Toffolo played for Nottingham mm. Forest. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, the Murphy twins who both mm. played in the Premier League. One Jacobs are currently at Newcastle. Carl Morris, striker for Luton. Yeah. Like mm. these are all players have had incredible careers. So mm. it's hard to beat like I can't beat myself up about it. But at the time, wow, I just thought Phew. Yeah. I wish I was yeah. the one scoring the header or yeah. making the challenge off the line because I was I was clued up to the fact that I knew that that wasn't me and that's mm. not going to benefit my individual career mm. being you know part of that. Um, so yeah, it was a bit sweet. Um, but there's different moments as well. I'd, I'd say representing the England C at you mm. know you know that that level was great um, and. Um, you know, playing in the football league, scoring in the football league. These are mm. small things that I've done. Yeah. I've thought, you know what? Fair play. Like, I've given myself yeah. a pat on the back. Like, yeah. I've played in the football league. Not loads and loads of times, but I've played in the football league and I've scored in it. And, um, you know, these are things I hang on to and um, realise that probably, you know, a lot of people would love to, you know, have the opportunity to, to do these things. So, mm. yeah, I wouldn't say this pimp. I can pinpoint certain accolades I've got. It's more of a reflection of where I've been through, like where I've come from, what I've done, and um, the, where I'm at now. Mm. Mm. No, it's it's so good. It's so good. And I think, like, you're in the top one percent. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. We're in small percentages, mm. even just being paid to play football. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So uh, I think it's uh, some more than others, it? by the way. <laughs> 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 I don't know about that, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I, f I think it's 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 massive in terms of what you're saying and i guess someone was speaking to me the other day about comparison of journeys mm. you know and i think especially for young players when you're either making decisions or going through a career um or even doing things beyond football like how big has comparison played whether positively or negatively um, and, and what advice would you give to younger players com so comparisons with like other people and on their journeys other people's journeys other people that you're playing with other people that mm. you aspire to to maybe be yeah um uh, i find that difficult because i've probably been on both sides where i've used comparison in terms of like a role model so mm. like i can you know i could maybe select someone who plays in my position let's just say Rio Ferdinand and I look at what he's done um how I'd like to emulate that this is me my, my younger self mm -hmm. um and you know the, there's a there's only a certain thing you can you know what we see is surface level right mm -hmm. so um we've got to be careful in terms of like comparing our journeys to other people mm -hmm. um especially with like social media you only see what people want you to see mm. they don't see you don't you know see the the depth of what someone's been through um the negative sides um as well as the positives it's it can be quite dangerous i'd say so um you know i think comparison um if you can if you can i i try to stay stay away from it i tried not to compare anymore um because in today's age, everything seems fake, <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, it's 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 difficult, really. Mm. It's difficult because for me personally, everyone again, everyone's different. Um, if I was to compare myself to people in where I want to be in their positions currently and where their trajectory is taking them to, I drive myself insane. Mm. Um, you know. Um, I feel like I'd always be playing catch up. And like I said, my most important thing for me now is the here and now. Like, mm. that's where I'm trying to focus my attention on, like here and now. And um, looking at other people and comparing my journey. 
um, I think will take me on a, a different path that I wouldn't be comfortable with, um, you know, but that's just me anyway. Yeah. Again, you can use comparisons in a beneficial way. You can compare your habits to someone else's habits or you can compare, take the good things from what you do see on social media, apply it to your life. But again, everything's surface, surface and, and you know, surface um, sh shallow. So you can never really take things too deeply from what you see, um, especially from people you don't know personally. Solid, mm. solid. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to end off of that initial imposter syndrome that you felt mm -hmm. going into the Norwich City Academy. How, where is it at now and how did it influence your moves to different clubs mm. and even your transition or your work as a power planner? Mm. Um, yeah, you know what? Probably, I probably still feel it now to an extent. Mm. Um, the, the initial imposter syndrome, again, come from the fact that I didn't have the advantage of being in an academy, right? So I was always playing catch up in my eyes. Um, pros and cons though, right? So mm. pros, there's also pros, like I'd work hard, probably harder than I need to, but I always felt, because I was felt like I was playing catch up, mm. I felt like I had to do my extras and uh, eat better than everyone else or do the things that I wouldn't usually do just to improve myself. Um, they're the pros, I suppose, but you know, the... Um, that imposter syndrome probably lasts until now, right? So I'm working in finance now. Again, these guys have all been to university and they've got these finance degrees, economics degrees. I've not got none of that. <laughs> I, I took my way into the job. <laughs> and um, so again, I feel like there's more catch up to do. But, um, you know, these things I'm saying are probably, they come across as pros because I'm, you know, working hard and I'm trying to get myself to a certain level. Um, and that's great but also I think you know as I said you need to realise what's important in your life and if you're mm. f living a life full of um, you know chasing the next thing and all like not being happy with your current situation and always getting frustrated or wanting to be better and earn more money like you're never really going to be happy or content yeah, I suppose yeah. you know so if it's, it's like we said off air it's all about balance right you've got yeah. to balance um, chasing something improving yourself but also like being here and now and enjoying life right it yeah. just goes quick so 100% mm. Mm. that's it so you shared your story of how you've won the FA Youth Cup gone through different experiences playing for many different clubs up and down the EFL and National League and ultimately how you've balanced football and other things beside it. One thing I'd ask is to like maybe like a young academy parent, what piece of advice would you give them? Wow, I've got to be careful here because this is not parental advice, by the way. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, I guess being a parent of, s if your kid's in an academy, um, and you've got like pound signs in your eyes, then please stop that. Like, that's not what <laughs> your approach should be to your child. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, um, I just think as with anything, whether it's football, whether it's dance, whether it's gymnastics, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, let your child enjoy, <laughs> enjoy mm. their sport. And, mm. um, and that, that's the most important thing I could say because that child will make the decision when they're, old enough and they will like decide you know where their journey goes but us and I say us because I'm a parent as well us mm. as parents have the duty to you know protect our kids and to let let them know about the real world and um, the chances of being a professional are slim you can do it if you want to do it that's great but also make them realistic to the fact that there's more to life outside mm. football because I, th I don't think parents really realize um what can happen, um, whether you do or don't make it, but mm. to a young person in today's world to, um, you know, go through the different highs and lows and, you know, what we're surrounded by and what we're exposed to is nothing like our parents' generation. Mm. So we need to be like aware of the fact that we've got to protect our kids, um, you know, on their journey um, and make them realise that, you know, life is a life is life, and football is football, um, <laughs> that's it, yeah. and that's just that's just do life before anything yeah. else, really. You know.
Because life is life and football is football. Yeah, yeah that take that one. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah. Take that one. Yeah. Nah, it's class. But then I think just a, a rounding off question in terms of... Um, what was the question again? <laughs> Who are you beyond football? Yeah. Again? Who are you beyond football? Who am I beyond football? Um, I am me and that person is a, a father, um, somebody who... Um, is starting to love like the smaller things in life mm. um uh i want to be someone who inspires um and i'd like to think that you know i'm just a great young man <laughs> mm. <laughs> and i think it's it sounds weird but i'm starting to get in the habit of praising myself mm. and using positive language on myself because um it's so not everyone's going to do it for you so i'd like to say you know i'm an ex an excellent young man yeah. <laughs> i'd like to hear it i okay, see it man. i feel like we've got we've got a champion that confidence yeah because i feel like society or even maybe the opposite gender they, they don't really like when when put them bring themselves up but i feel like when i see that level of confidence when you're mm. confident in yourself and what you bring to the table is is it's beautiful. Yeah. So, no, it's good. And, and even more so in football in terms of finding your identity. Mm. None of those that you said was <laughs> football, nah. you know. Yeah, you play. Mm. Um, like you said, life is life and football is football. What mm. We're talking about Kevin mm. in life, mm. you know. Mm. And Kevin can play football as well, but it's big. It's, yeah. it's big to know who you are in life, mm. you know. Really champion that mm. and really build that up, man. So it's... Nah, it's a blessing man. still. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Gotta own it, man. Yeah. That's it. Can't rely on no one to do it for you. No. So. That's right. Yeah. That's true. Kevin Loco. Thank you, my guys. Thank you for coming no, on the Beyond no, Football no, Podcast. It. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Great stuff, man. And make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys got any questions for Loco, put them down below in the comment section. And till next time. Mm.